And um, I'm really glad uh, that Maciej Piasecki from Poland managed to come because he came yesterday uh, night, almost today, <laughs> uh, from Klarin meeting in Leipzig. Uh, well, let me just uh, say a few words about <clears throat> Maciej. So he is a professor at Wroclaw University of Science and Technology. And he is also, um, which is very important for Alexis project, a national, the, the national coordinator of Klarin Poland and also a chair of National Coordinators Forum for the whole uh, Clarin Eric, so the European Clarin. Uh, and what is even more important for today's uh, event, he was, for 14 years, he was leading the Polish WordNet uh, project. Uh, he just told me that it was something like eight different projects throughout time. So now uh, Polish WordNet is actually... Uh, you could say that it's the biggest Polish dictionary of contemporary Polish, um, <clears throat> um, well, at least at this moment. So we would really like to hear all about it, please. Thank you very much for introducing me. How to change, uh, because I can see on my notebook, on the over here. Just uh, presentation. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm not <laughs> experienced with Windows. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry. A um, uh, long time ago, I was using Windows for, for, uh, for practical purposes. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much for introducing me. The topic of my talk is WordNet as a relation semantic dictionary built on, on corpus data. I wanted to make it a little bit in a broader perspective, not to talk, not to talk only and too much about Polish WordNet. However, uh, as this is our, our main experience, I will refer to Polish WordNet uh, quite often. We, uh, I mentioned here on the uh, title page uh, Agnieszka Jobas, a, a Plenty of people working for Polish WordNet uh, over time during these 14 years. Agnieszka is, uh, is for the last couple of years, she's the chief um, uh, linguist in, in our team, uh, coordinating uh, the, the, just the daily and work and, and being also the main, I would say, designer of a con contemporary direction of development of WordNet. So I will start with a, a very short uh, in introduction to the idea of word that I'm not sure how much if everyone uh, knows what is uh, uh, about Princeton Warner because I heard many times that Princeton WordNet is, is criticized as not being dictionary so I wasn't sure if people from the Ill, uh, lexicographic conference uh, pay attention to such a resource. That is why I, I put the first point just a short introduction reminding um, about uh, the basic features of WordNet when uh, uh, I'll go uh, towards uh, uh, how to, we can uh, transform WordNet, which is, a, as I said in a moment, a moment before, is not really a dictionary, how we can transform it into, into a, a relational semantic dictionary, taking some inspiration from its construction. And I'll, next I will concentrate uh, on the model that we have developed uh, for our proposed WordNet, but this model obviously can be applied for any other WordNet and the model uh, in which we specified uh, synthesis definition, constitutive, rel constitutive relations and features as a main means uh, for uh, the final structure. And uh, if, during time we discovered also that some non-relational elements are necessary to complete uh, the structure for many reasons. And next I would, would like to talk about a method that we developed for building our WordNet or just we use because obviously we are using techniques that are quite
point where non corpus we call this corpus based wordnet development process this is maybe not very standard in wordnet development but as we see many techniques are very well known from dictionary development and uh, next is our observation that wordnet is not enough not enough for different applications because wordnet is most is first of all a lexical semantic resource used for different uh, applications in natural language processing and some lessons that we that we learned and uh, and the proof of our concept were polish wordnet in use um, Okay, so Princeton WordNet, a prototypical WordNet, um, wasn't started, wasn't invented as a, as a dictionary. George Miller, a, a seminar a psychologist uh, 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 with enormous record of different achievements in science, uh, once he wanted, in the beginning of the uh, 80s, uh, he wanted to, uh, to study uh, the way children uh, uh, learn la language, acquire meanings, and he planned WordNet. As a, as a limited uh, psycholinguistic experiment on language acquisition by children aimed to explain how lexical meanings are stored in the mind. George Miller was a core author of the idea of, of a semantic network and he wanted to put this into practical experiment. So according to his own words, WordNet is an online lexical reference system whose design is inspired by current psycholinguistic psycho theories of human lexical memory. And so definitely it wasn't meant to be a dictionary. And uh, later, uh, growing in size, uh, in co uh, expand with expanding content, it was developed into lexical semantic database uh, because being a semantic network, and uh, it was it started to be described as a network network of lexicalized concepts represented as synthets, synonym sets. And uh, this notion of lexicalized concept is a key notion in the construction of uh, Princeton WordNet and most of existing WordNets. Um, one of the biggest invention uh, of uh, George Miller was to, uh, uh, to get a permission from Princeton University to, defy, to uh, publish Princeton WordNet in some moment on open license. And this was amazingly uh, good uh, move because uh, later WordNet, Princeton WordNet uh, being criticized uh, for many, uh, for many uh, for many errors included, for, for many limitations, uh, because it was uh, available, because it was a very big resource, it became just one of the, fund was one of the most important resources in, uh, lex uh, in natural language processing. And uh, now if you, put, uh, if you type in Google Princeton WordNet, WordNet, you'll find millions of, of hits, thousands of applications, citations, um, etc. And in Princeton WordNet, as uh, the main building element is a set of synonyms. Here you have some simple example taken just from the web page. So there's a set of synonyms from, with car, auto, automobile, machine, motor car, and they were linked together as representing some lexicalized concepts sharing some part uh, uh, of meaning. Uh, with, uh, next we have a short uh, desc uh, textual description called uh, in WordNet, uh, it is called uh, oh, weak. okay. It is called um, uh, gloss because it's much more reduced in comparison to uh, in typical dictionary. Then we have what is the, the main uh, uh, the main um, means for describing meanings. In WordNet is a network of relations. So we have uh, a couple of relations from. Uh, from WordNet, from describing this synthet as cited here, uh, direct hyponym, ambulance, beach wagon, part uh, meronyms, uh, it's a subtype of meronymy, accelerator, accelerator pedal, and maybe you could no you can notice that relations links synthets, not words, not senses, but senses. Everything in WordNet, Princeton WordNet, is organized around senses. When we take a broader perspective, here you see a part of a network. By the way, this visualization is taken from our web application. I will say a couple of words about it. It is a, we have been developing the system for many years. It's, it is open, and it allows for visual editing. Uh, so here is a screenshot, but the blue uh, triangles are buttons that can be used 
to unfold, to navigate across the structure, but also editors can in any moment uh, directly on the structure can introduce uh, changes, add new uh, uh, elements, add new synsets, add new relations, delete exists some, some relations, so everything can be changed uh, by working on this dynamic structure and you can see as many levels as possible. As I mentioned, this is open and also all our resources and tools are open. So, uh, there is a large network of, of sensors. Here, every sensor is represented only on this visualization only by one single element, just the first element from, from the list. In theory, since it is a set, but in all word net, since it is not a set, but a list. Um, so we take just the first element from the list to, to present on the screen, not to clutter the screen with too many, many elements. And the main problem with WordNet we found at the beginning of our work in 2005, fortunately uh, we, uh, we, we were a team of uh, computational linguists like me and, uh, and lexicographers. And we started with a very uh, late, uh, it appeared very fruitful uh, quarters uh, in between, between us because for uh, our uh, computational linguistic side was, uh, our task was simple. We want, we, we need, we need, uh, we thought that we need, what we need was, was just to uh, construct a set network of, uh, of synsets based on synonymy. And our uh, colleagues from lexicography asked us, uh, okay, but what is the synonymy here? What is this lexicalized concept? how to define, how to find the lexicalized concepts in text. We don't see lexicalized concepts in corpora. We see words, we see meanings, but, but not, not abstract concepts. And uh, we try to find some, uh, some def more in-depth definitions, some procedures, and it was difficult. It, it, it seemed that this notion of lexicalized concept in the world of world nets uh, is uh, understood and defined in a very intuitive way. So there's a problem how to operationalize Analyze this definition. How to define procedures in, according to which our language could work in a consistent way? So, uh, the notion of, of sensets uh, as a basic notion for WordNet uh, appear to be very problematic. And taking a, uh, and if we go further, if we find some use uh, examples in, 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 in text, in word, in corpora, they refer to, they involve words, not concepts. If we uh, find uh, context, collocation, everything is related to words, occurrences of semantic relations uh, or, uh, in text, uh, in, in, in the form of two of words linked by relation, also related to words, or the, the relation defined, etc. So there's a, uh, there's a, was a problem how to work with the material, how to, how to build a word net. Um, in, uh, and uh, after this very fruitful course, we develop a slightly different interpretation of the WordNet uh, structure. Uh, I've, I've, I can claim that, that this is a more linguistic approach to building a WordNet. So we made the lexical meanings as the main building blocks in the, uh, in the WordNet structure. And the WordNet, in our, from our perspective, is, most, is just primarily is a uh, graph of lexical semantic relations linking uh, uh, word meanings, uh, lexical meanings. And uh, lexical meanings are described in this, in this structure by uh, different properties of local graph structures. So two, two different meanings must have two different local graph structures or relations around them. And this is the basic means of differentiating and the basic reason to differentiate two different meanings to distinguish meanings in, in our WordNet, in just WordNet. So, uh, uh, there is a uniform format of meaning description. Every meaning description of a lexical meaning is just a subgraph of lexical semantic relations being a part of a bigger word net structure. Um, it's, it, there is a kind of formalization because we have a limited set of relations, uh, some properties, and uh, these relations are used to define the, the whole structure. However, obviously, such an approach to defining meaning is partial. Partial because it's limited to the types of lexical semantic relations they're using. And uh, the only, uh, what is said about individual lexical meaning is only just 
uh, expressed by revelations. Uh, so, uh, in this approach to defining meaning, uh, in fact, we have uh, for each lexical meaning a set of constraints. We uh, define what this, this uh, meaning, uh, what kind of behavior it uh, should express, but nothing more. And uh, such we, later, when we are working, uh, when our, the structure of WordNet was, work, was getting bigger, such meaning those distinctions appeared to be not uh, obvious at the first view for humans, but, but uh, for starting with our linguists, with ourselves. So later we added some non-relational elements to, to the model as well. And, uh, and the basic element, as I said, is in our word and structure is lexical unit, which is technically understood as a triple uh, part of speech, lemma, and sense identifier. Sense identifier is just a kind of number. And these are the basic building blocks, but where are sensets? You cannot have WordNet without sensets, because sensets are used in many applications. So, we finally, from lexical, lexical semantic relations, we got to the level of sensets. In, in which way? We, we, I, uh, we had problems with synonymy, so we tried to avoid definition, defining synonymy in a direct way, but we found that such relations like hypernymy, hyponymy, meronymy, holonymy, or cause relations, some different type of, types of entailment in the case of verbs, are much more easier to be defined in a consistent way. Way, to be recognized in a, in a consistent way. So we defined that a sunset is a group of lexical units that share some uh, types of relations. We call them constitutive relations. Constitutive because these relations define the whole structure of the word net. Later we, uh, we discovered that we need to add to the picture some feature uh, attributes like uh, we have to pay attention to it. Stylistic register, aspect, semantic classes uh, for adjectives and verbs. Recently also we consider some emotive attributes as a, as a potential instrument for uh, def constraining defining meanings. Um, and a relation between two synsets is a shorthand for sharing relation between lexical units. Let me show you this on the example. Here we have a, a, a meanings like uh, zu, uh, first meaning uh, lexical unit number one for this lemma, paragon, vzorzet uh, to uh, pattern, and we, ca we can see that vzor, for example, is a hypernym for idol, idol, for Bożyszcze, approximately idol, for Gwiazdor, star, uh, Wzorzec is also a hypernym for this element. We could take a look into for these lexical units. We could take a look into meronymy and into other constitutive relations, and we can observe that there is a natural grouping, clustering. Meanings are clustered according to relations they share. So this is the, work, this is the, the idea of constitutive relations that uh, define just in a natural topological clustering way in the graph, the def, def, graph of lexical units, they find synsets. So synsets are derived from other relations, and the relation between synsets in our case is, many, is not conceptual relations, it's just a linguistic, lexicographic, uh, uh, se, lexical semantic relation. So synsets in our approach is just a notational convention uh, defined on the basis of constitutive relations. And uh, as I mentioned, constitutive relations. Uh, they often uh, are not uh, uh, enough uh, uh, to define, but, but earlier, what, are, what kind of uh, conditions every constitutive relation should fulfill? should be well established in linguistics in order to have good understanding what is this relation and in order to have some, some relation comparison to existing uh, dictionaries and resources. Um, as we re require uh, uh, constitutive relation because it, de it defines the structure should, should be able to be recognized with some sufficient specificity and consistency between a group of people working. On our 
heard that sometimes up to 40 persons uh, were working in parallel uh, on construction of Polish and mapping to English and adding also a team working on emotive annotation, the, the group of people working uh, in parallel sometimes even uh, was up to uh, 50 persons in, in, in some short, short some periods. So, uh, uh, consideration should be useful in generalization, so it should be relatively frequent and uh, should describe sets of lexical units systematically, so it should be shared between lexical units. Uh, in WordNet, we try to, uh, to have a limited number of relations due to applications of WordNet, uh, because if the number of, of uh, different relations is increasing, in that moment, the, in, the interpretation in different uh, processing applications is becoming more uh, uh, problematic. Uh, so uh, the level of generalization of the word and the level to, up to which we define meanings depends on the selection of constitutive relations. And uh, uh, word that structure should be also basis of a kind of inference. We should be able to derive some conclusions from word that structures. So we found that we need, in some moments, we need some additional constraints on a relation definitions, some kind of meta conditions. And these meta conditions are the main source for what we call constitutive, constitutive features. And as I mentioned, we have three such uh, constitutive features in the present moment. Stylistic registers, semantic verb classes, and aspects, and uh, in, uh, very often uh, definitions of lexical semantic relations, uh, word net relations, uh, refer to these this, uh, uh, properties. So they are expressed in relations. Summing up, our model can be described as a model that tries to uh, follow a kind of minimal commitment principle. Uh, we try to make our, uh, the model of our word not open for any particular theory of meaning. So we didn't uh, assume any theory in the background. Um, we don't, uh, we try to, uh, we try to avoid going, uh, beyond just lex uh, language uh, data, language material that, that can be observed, uh, in corpora, in use. Obviously, our linguists are using the often intuition, but I will you'll see in later, um, uh, still we try to develop some tools that, to, in, by which we try to increase the level of objectiveness of decisions. So, um, uh, in all cases, in all places, we try to refer to facts that can be checked in the language data, observed in the language use, and uh, we try to make uh, the word net we construct open to many potential interpretations, uh, starting from some formal uh, and ending with maybe even some psycholinguistically motivated uh, interpretations. Um, Non-relational um, uh, elements. Uh, Constitutive features, different kinds of attributes, obviously are non, aren't relations. However, as you, as I, as I said, these constitutive features, uh, in, uh, influence the structure of relations. But, uh, we, at some moment we started adding some comments, the comments later we expanded to short definition glosses. So, we have them in the structure and use examples that uh, appeared, uh, that appeared, occurred to be the, the most uh, useful type of non-relational relational description glosses. Um are very reduced definition, reduced because genus term, for example, is already represented by hypernym. A set of different, different uh, the related words is partially uh, expressed by different types of uh, relations uh, linking uh, lexical units. So we don't, we, uh, there's a potential redundancy in, in glosses. Sometimes useful because it's a, uh, also a kind of diagnostic mechanism, but we try to, uh, to avoid such a redundancy, not express in gloss what is already expressed in relations. Positives, uh, improve understanding by the editing team, members and users, and, additional, and glosses are very useful additional information for words and ambiguation as a, uh, to use in using word as a database for words as the ambiguation in text. Um, and also we try to keep glosses short because of uh, economy of effort. We don't want to repeat what was already is what in gloss what is already e uh, expressed in the word structures. In those places where there is a one-to-one uh, -one link to Wikipedia, we also add links to Wikipedia articles, which is a little bit problematic because Wikipedia can change over time. So we, in fact, we should have 
skip uh, some version of Wikipedia to which we link in the given moment. Uh, There's a problem of versioning. And uh, user examples uh, uh, are, f first of all, source of uh, knowledge, knowledge that we use in constructing. And uh, unfortunately, a little bit too late, we started linking them to different uh, senses. Now uh, I see that, that this is... There was a balance between how much time, uh, how much resources, human resources we had for, for building WordNet. And also for WordNet, it's important to be large because uh, this, is a, this is a lexical semantic resource. In order to be, if we want to, uh, to use a, a WordNet in practice, we need to have a good coverage of uh, words, uh, of lemmas and senses in, in it. So, so in some, in the, some initial moment of building a WordNet, it's important to make it bigger and only add some more information later. Uh, what we are doing, we had uh, several iterations of going almost across the whole WordNet and adding something, and in that moment verifying different elements over years. Um, uh, further potential extensions of, of these non-relational elements. I would add more, uh, more large number of examples, of use examples, different use examples. Maybe some kind of contextual use examples. Use examples with links to, to particular places in corpora. And uh, it would be very useful to have sense and ambiguated examples, but this is very costly. But maybe it would be possible to, to, to this, do this. So, coming to, uh, to our Polish WordNet, which, is, uh, which has two names. The the Polish name is Słowosiec, the English name is PL WordNet. Because of Polish users, we keep two, two names uh, being used in parallel. And so uh, our goal was to build a WordNet which provides a faithful and comprehensive description of, of a system of uh, Polish lexical semantics. So we assumed, maybe not at the beginning, because at the beginning of 2005 we, weren't, we couldn't imagine that we would be able to continue this work over years and to, to get some more funding. So, so the, our initial goals were much more limited. But later, in some moment, uh, we thought that it would be good to to build a WordNet which, uh, whose structure uh, represents uh, act, uh, accurately the lexical semantic relations between lexical meaning. Oh, this was an in, in important uh, element of a strategy from the very beginning, but, but some, co some comprehensive description, a large scale description came later. And uh, be motivated only by observation derived from Polish language data. So we, uh, uh, from the very beginning, we discarded, we didn't want to imp um, uh, use any form of translation uh, from Princeton WordNet. The vast majority of WordNets in the world was, was constructed just by translating uh, data from Princeton WordNet. From our point of view, this was a wrong way uh, because we wanted to see what is a, uh, how the Polish lexical system really looks like. And uh, some, from some moment, we, wa we, uh, we Wanted, we aimed at building a resource with good coverage with respect to lemmas, word senses, uh, and instances, uh, example, uh, occurrences of lexical semantic relations. And in close correspondence to language data, this was somehow enforced uh, on us uh, in, because we couldn't, uh, so we used uh, large text corpus as a primary source. Why? Because we didn't have any dictionary uh, on any more or less open license from which we could take anything and on which we could base. All the dictionaries were completely closed, so we, we, we just took a lot of text, uh, we collected the different corpora, uh, corpora and started working with what we had. Um, uh, uh, we developed several language uh, tools and systems supporting uh, corpus exploration, but exploration starting with such a simple uh, um, techniques like uh, uh, frequency, concordances, but also we, in order to speed up a process to support the process, and later we discovered to increase the quality of the process uh, of the construction of WordNet, we uh, developed uh, set of different types of tools for extracting lexical, uh, lexical semantic knowledge uh, from, uh, from corpora, uh, semantic similarity, relations, sense clusters, and uh, methods of combining them in a, a kind of semi-automated WordNet expansion method, uh, painful algorithm that was uh, in some moment proposed by us. Uh, so uh, 
The whole process starts with extraction of uh, frequency lists, uh, potential lemmas, acquisition of lexicosemantic knowledge, generation of suggestions for linguists, the, and, but this, all the decisions are made by uh, lexicographers. All these tools are only supporting, not uh, replacing the, the word. Any piece of our WordNet wasn't automatically added. Every single element was uh, manually uh, checked. It costed quite a lot, it's true. Uh, altogether, something uh, around 50 person years uh, building a word and then it's mapping to, to English. But I think it's, uh, uh, it's worth, the result is worth of this effort. So, um, uh, corpus-based WordNet development means that starting with corpus, uh, we try to work mainly with material uh, and knowledge extracted from corpus, but as, we, as you will see, we consult all different existing other sources uh, of, of knowledge. So uh, the first step is to collect large uh, corpus built from all available sources. That next extraction of lemma frequencies, frequency list, uh, selection of new lemmas. Uh, this is becoming more and more tricky when the material is, is, is expanded and we are going towards less frequent uh, words. It cannot be done automatically. The selection of new lemmas from, uh, for frequency lists. Uh, next, we built, uh, uh, using different methods, a measure of semantic relatedness. Uh, ten years ago, we used uh, methods based on a matrix of coincidence. Nowadays, we are using, obviously, a different form of word embeddings, but this also requires some, some careful tuning. And uh, uh, measure of semantic relatedness is a basis for clustering new lemmas into packages, and such packages as a basic uh, unit that, uh, of, uh, for assigning words to in, uh, work to individual linguists. Every linguist is receiving, uh, is assigned uh, to, to work and to process a package of lemmas that, uh, according to the measure of semantic similar, similar relatedness are semantically related according to some of the meanings. This uh, helps a lot to concentrate on some specific subdomains for uh, during, wor during working on, on description. And extraction of uh, knowledge uh, uh, sources uh, from corpus and uh, there's a system I will show in a moment uh, for WordNet uh, editing and the system uh, reads all the knowledge sources, tries to combine them uh, and tries to uh, uh, support linguists by showing some suggestions about uh, meanings, about placement of new words in the structure. And uh, important, important aspect is the uh, management of a linguistic uh, team and the linguistic work, because if you are working with 20 people uh, uh, in, uh, working parallel at the same time, uh, careful monitoring, uh, following the works, controlling the quality, verification, and even some uh, word, work assignment are important uh, issues. So, um, uh, for t uh, first corpus was built on the basis of what we could get, so uh, from existing corpora, like corpus of, of EPPAN, Rzeczpospolita corpus, Wikipedia, but this was up to altogether no more than 700 millions of words. At the beginning it was quite a lot, but, but very quickly it became too, too little. So the next main source is just internet and what we can get from internet. Uh, the existing uh, national corpus of Polish of 1.6 billion words, we can consult it, but we cannot process it. So we cannot get any knowledge from it. So we, uh, so we build a corpus that we called uh, uh, PL WordNet corpus and the latest uh, version is, uh, includes more than 4 billion tokens and probably recently was, in, if I remember correctly, expanded by my colleague to 4.5 billion tokens. And uh, for our contemporary needs, it's a little bit too little. And uh, uh, from this, we extract uh, uh, lemma frequency lists uh, and uh, in each iteration, we, we target uh, 7,000 to 8,000 new lemmas. Uh, and the, uh, these lemmas, as I mentioned, as for, unfortunately must be uh, manually verified. It's not 
it's not possible. Uh, too much noise is, is, uh, is, is extracted from uh, in, uh, text collected from internet. So, and then uh, such a as, uh, in one iteration with 7,000 and 9,000 new lemmas are clustered, semantically clustered into clusters of uh, from 100 to to. 200 uh, uh, lemmas, and that, according to uh, to some, uh, measure of similarity, uh, have some uh, they share some some meaning. Uh, extraction of knowledge sources, I mentioned different ways of, of uh, identifying uh, pairs of words linked by semantic relations and a method for semi-automatic word expansion I will show uh, on a, a short example. Uh, when we started uh, our work in 2006, uh, 8, uh, methods based on, the measure of, on matrices of coincidence were uh, weren't, uh, weren't uh, were uh, the accuracy was, 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 was poor, as you could see here on the example, of, uh, approximately from the time from, from the corpus about one billion words, uh, only some uh, for a word. Uh, there is a list of the most related, only some of them are useful for the construction of word. That this is why such a list wasn't in fact uh, the most very important source of information for linguists. I, uh, recently, the situation, the situation is much better. Here is a uh, result obtained with fast text on uh, our large corpus, and you see that almost all suggestions with uh, some of them are typos, uh, some of them are only uh, somehow related, but there are some interesting suggestions for augmentatives, for diminutives, for some, some uh, cross uh, cross links between different parts of speech. So nowadays, this, this use of uh, such lists obtained from uh, word embeddings are a very useful source of knowledge for, for linguists. And even here, I'm, uh, I'm using uh, examples for non-filtered non lists, the non uh, list which wasn't filtered by morphological analyzer uh, or guesser. If you apply, uh, apply such a tool, the result is even better. Why fast text? Because fast text is much better for, uh, for languages with uh, rich inflection uh, and uh, fast text is cap capable to, uh, of clustering uh, forms with neologism, some, some, some uh, typos, etc. Our methods for word and expand, automated word and expansion work in such a way that for a new word here in the in purple um, oval, uh, we have a structure and we want to find for this new word possible potential place or places in the structure. So using knowledge sources, we put on the network uh, some initial activation and using spreading activation algorithm, simplifying a lot, everything, we observe how the initial spreading of activation goes across the network. From what, what is the source of initial activation? Uh, Relations ex extracted from uh, from corpora by different uh, uh, automate uh, different methods. So ex extract uh, from the given new word uh, not yet described. We extract lists of uh, potential links between this new word and words being already in the network, and uh, every such a place suggested by the extracted uh, link from, from corpus is an uh, initial activation. And from this we can, uh, processing uh, this, the state of a network of activation, we can identify potential suggested uh, meanings in the form of subgraphs. And here for alpinism, alpinism we have uh, several suggestions. Some of them are only because of, of some um, lack of connection in, in the activated structure, but two of them are very important, uh, very, very good, sport and, uh, uh, and uh, sport and alpinism as a, as a recreation and, uh, and sport. And the sport uh, asp, uh, meaning was uh, denied in the first moment by Wordnet editors, uh, but later they checked, they analyzed, and they found it a very useful suggestion. So very often such a semantic exploration is... is uh, is drawing attention to some existing meanings. Um, here you can see the general picture screenshot of our WordNet Loom 
to a 2.0 application, which is a system for word net editing and supporting the, the work on the structure. As I mentioned, this graph is fully interactive, and also you can see uh, on the left uh, 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 panels with uh, searching facilities. On the top right, there is a quick uh, there's a very nice tool for going across uh, big graphs. Uh, in the uh, uh, right bottom part is a description of a, net, of a synset, properties, uh, glosses, and also a uh, relation between lexical units. Uh, the screen can be divided into several parts. The system, uh, to compare different structures, uh, the system supports several, uh, many languages. Uh, I, I mean, you can work with lexicons uh, for many languages or even for the same language uh, uh, in, in parallel in the same database. Um, so it's quite a flexible solution and uh, uh, tested on a large group of linguists is open. Um, also, we'll be happy if, you, if somebody would like, uh, would like to, to use it. We can, we can uh, as a clavin, we can support this um, as, uh, with, with pleasure. And uh, the system also for Polish, but also for other languages, can, uh, we can uh, extract and upload to the system uh, examples uh, clustered into potential senses, and this uh, facility appeared to be very useful for verbs, adjectives, and adverbs in Polish, because they weren't very well described in existing dictionaries. So consulting dictionaries wasn't very, very helpful, and, and uh, working with data uh, from Corpus was much more profitable. Um, uh, so this, is about, this was about uh, WordNet editing supported by tools. And but as I mentioned, uh, we also consult traditional linguistic resources like dictionaries, encyclopedias, uh, lexicon, linguistic intuition, uh, group work, but also guidelines uh, that work that are carefully designed for different relations. And uh, a very important aspect in the large group of linguists is management of a linguistic work team. We developed an application that was initially called Big Brother. Its newest version is presented here. Its official name is now WordNet Tracker. And in this application, you have uh, the set of functions to just uh, monitor, follow the work second by second, uh, every change, statistics. So you can get, uh, you can check what uh, uh, was done by different persons. You can and go back many years and see who made uh, what kind of change. So you can trace back and see what were the reasons that some uh, decision was made. And this is very helpful, especially in explaining some uh, situations that are not clear. As I uh, signaled, WordNet is not enough for, uh, for processing, but also WordNet shouldn't be everything. Uh, so we tried not to include too many things in, in WordNet, but in, in, instead to create a network of resources in which our WordNet is a central, or just... Uh, just in some place, maybe not central, uh, but it's an interface be between uh, uh, language and, and uh, knowledge. So uh, we have uh, connect we are, uh, connected to our WordNet uh, resources like uh, Valenti, which is a like, uh, uh, syntactic semantic Valenti dictionary, very large. Uh, there is our there is our uh, this is, uh, describing uh, multi uh, lexicalized multi, multi word expressions. Uh, we have uh, mapping to, to expanded Princeton WordNet, which we has expanded to a larger version. Uh, there is our dictionary of uh, proper names, very large, and dictionary of proper names is uh, we treat it as a part of of uh, uh, knowledge description. So here you have entities, and here you have a very large network of different knowledge resources. Our WordNet is semi-automatically mapped onto sum ontology, and also semi-automatically mapped to different open. Fizari ontologies, uh, library, uh, librarian des des descriptors, uh, even you can go from a WordNet to the uh, Library of Congress descriptors. So now it's uh, approximately about uh, 50 million uh, different uh, um, concepts linked uh, uh, directly directly to a WordNet. Um, 
uh, probably I'm just running out of time. I was asked to be about 40 minutes. Just to, to I haven't talked uh, so so, uh, so far. What is inside? So just a short a short glimpse. Um, in the case of uh, synthetic relations, constitutive relations, we have such typical relations: hyponymy, hyponymy, meronymy, holonymy, and for proper names, instant type. But we have very very limited number of proper names in, inside our structure. I can later elaborate why. Why we don't include proper names into our uh, WordNet, contrary to, to Princeton WordNet. And, uh, and uh, very th I think the interesting relation is inter-register synonymy, which uh, uh, explains our approach to synonymy. Uh, uh, in one sense, uh, in um, Hyponymy, according to the definition, can link hyponymy, hyponymy meronymy can link only uh, senses that are of uh, compatible uh, stylistic registers. If we have two senses, like here, samohut, uh, a car, and fura, a car, but in an informal language, even I would say slang. So we don't put such words into one senset because, for example, samohut, a car, and fura, they have different hyponyms. So we create two different sensets, and these sensets are linked by interregister synonymy. So with a synonymy with, uh, up to the, uh, uh, with respect to synonymy, but, but uh, with different uh, uh, stylistic register. And this relation works very nice for nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs as well. And uh, every relation is defined uh, first by textual definition, up to, approximately up to one page in our uh, manual. Uh, then uh, there is an uh, important part of the definition of every relation is a set uh, of substitution tests. So substitution test is a template of sentences uh, from one to um, to couple, but no more than ten. And uh, here we have a positive test uh, that uh, X and Y are place uh, holders for, for uh, inflected forms of lemmas, and we expect that all three sentences uh, will, uh, will be, after being instantiated, like here on, in the example, all three sentences uh, sounds uh, correct, and we can find in corpus examples of real language use that, that, uh, that resembles uh, this kind of sentence. Or, or at least just supports this kind of uh, sentences. This is a very simple example for hyponymy, but uh, you can take a look into our um, uh, reports, into our guidelines for, uh, for linguists, and for every single relation, every single subtype, we define some, such substitution tests, we, we analyze them, we uh, make several iterations, several tests, before putting them uh, into practice. And what is uh, also maybe interesting that in our WordNet editing application, before any editing decision is made, uh, substitution test uh, appropriate for the relation to analyzed is present on the screen and automatically uh, instantiated with appropriate forms of uh, lemmas, of lexica units uh, considered. Yeah, because the tricky thing is here that uh, during uh, application of this test, we ask linguists to think about senses, meanings, not about just words. And uh, um, there is also a very rich list of, no, of lexical relations linking not, not synsets but lexical units. The dif dif distinction is only because these relations are not shared so they cannot be used as, as constitutive relations like antonymy. It's a very interesting phenomenon why antonymy is not shared between, between, uh, among uh, synonym, synonymous uh, uh, senses. And many of these relations uh, were motivated by derivational relations, but we, treat, but we don't, do not describe just formal derivational links, but we try to include uh, uh, semantic relations that are expressed by derivation, and very often such a semantic relation are next generalized beyond uh, simple, beyond the formal um, derivational link. 
And uh, in the, 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 the system of evaluation is quite rich. Uh, just to give another example, in the case of verbs, we ended with a whole uh, system of uh, relations going into different, uh, um, f that covers some, the whole spectrum of uh, temporal dependencies. Like we have backward relations, presupposition, not very numerous, but we keep it as a quite interesting phenomena. Preceding, which is the kind of weaker form of presupposition, uh, simplifying. Then we have a relation of co occurrence of two situations. Uh, we call it uh, verbal memonymy and holonymy. Uh, both are not automatically reversed, so it means that you don't always have memonymy and holonymy uh, uh, in both directions uh, for the same pair of uh, synsets and flex units. For example, pshoika to swallow is an integral part of situation yesh to eat, and vice versa as well. Yesh to eat is a typical situation, including pshoika uh, to swallow. Uh, next, we uh, have a, a relation showing that one uh, meaning is a beginning of some situation, for example, zakochać się, to fall in love, uh, is linked to kochać. Here you clearly see the diversional div 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 uh, link between these two, but this incoactivity uh, in relation uh, uh, is, is used much beyond uh, uh, derivation links. And, uh, and finally, resulting uh, processuality that uh, uh, to become or to becoming, uh, causality, well known uh, to cause. But as you could, can notice, all these relations are uh, generalized beyond verb to verb uh, pairs and state being in some state and uh, multiplica multiplicativity, uh, repetition of some state or activity, distributivity, performing activity by many subjects or many objects and uh, uh, inter-register synonymy. Uh, sorry for going so quickly across this, but I can go back to this if in the case of questions. Here are some numbers uh, coming to a kind of evaluation. What is uh, our work worth? So, uh, first of all, size, as what we mentioned, um, uh, 190,000 uh, to 92,000 uh, lemmas, 290,000 lexical units, um, um, more than 200,000 synsets. Um, we have smaller synsets than other word nets. Uh, this is a result of our approach to synonymy, uh, of our definition of synonymy. Uh, so, yeah, this is a quite large resource. Uh, we have uh, 53 different uh, types of relations, 107 including subtypes, but also uh, so the whole network is, uh, consists of more than 700,000 uh, links and there is 205,000 uh, glosses, uh, um, a lot of examples, links to Wikipedia, and also uh, a very large portion is uh, described with, uh, with uh, sentiment uh, annotation uh, uh, with emotive annotation, and the whole world, the whole, the whole, uh, uh, our WordNet is uh, mapped manually to, uh, to Princeton WordNet. We checked coverage of Corpora, and the coverage of, of, of Corpora is, uh, uh, in the, the, for most frequent words, is very good because we are just going down the frequency list, and, uh, and final, uh, kind of test application, we have Quite many applications, especially we are very proud that, that our WordNet is used also in linguistic uh, uh, research, in lexicographic research, in comparative. Uh, as, a, as a dictionary, is, you can download it on, on your mobile. You can uh, use a web page. Uh, there is a special application. Uh, the WordNet Loom is also available uh, in a read-only format to, to, to consult WordNet as a dictionary. And uh, uh, in addition to, to many uh, applications in research, uh, in natural language processing, uh, because our WordNet is uh, open, uh, is available as a free resource, there are at least something like 100 companies using it for uh, different, uh, different systems. Uh, but uh, what is interesting, it doesn't mean that our university is not gaining any, anything uh, from this commercial application. 
we, are, uh, we cooperate with different companies uh, on some, uh, several projects, uh, so our resources, our tools are free, but, uh, so, but uh, we, are, we are often the partner uh, on projects in which we are co uh, constructing uh, uh, some uh, uh, some specific solutions. I, th I think that's a good good uh, model. And uh, so the list of diff uh, different applications is due also to uh, quite uh, in, in quite large coverage of our resource. So summing up, Corpus-based uh, word and development methods allows for good coverage of language data and being close to the language, and uh, and minimal commitment principle uh, word and model models uh, model results in a relational uh, semantic dictionary. And uh, peer wordness is, can be example of a word net which is a in relation semantic dictionary, not only not only WordNet, but or primarily maybe a relation semantic dictionary present the form of a WordNet. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. thank you. thank you very much. It's true that we are late, but we will definitely take some time for questions now. So, yes. So you were. Oh, okay, thank you first of all because this is really fantastic. Thank you. It's uh, something uh, we will are uh, planning to do ourselves, so you have a partner because we have done much of it already. Secondly, my question is that do you have some kind of, uh, I might have missed it uh, and I came uh, five minutes later, do, do you have an etymological uh, means to distinct meanings? For instance, uh, in a, under a single root, if there is a synonymy that is not originally caused by identity of the words. Uh, by, by, uh, could you, the last part? Uh, Sorry? Uh, the last word you said. Uh, uh, what I mean is that if you, uh, you had uh, actually in Polish two words uh, that have collided together in Polish language, would they were originally not identical? Late synonyms, uh, or yes. Uh, yeah, no, our uh, way of uh, of discovering synonyms is, is first uh, to analyze uh, uh, the use uh, of of, uh, of words and discovering uh, uh, others lexical semantic relations uh, like hypernym and anonymy. And even the moment they share, uh, if two meanings share different relations, we we uh, we consider them uh, synonyms. However, to be honest, in some cases, when you go down the structure. Uh, to more specific words, it can happen that there are not too many relations uh, describing uh, different meanings. So we have as a, as a last resort a solution definition of synonymy as a mutual hypernymy, but we try to avoid using it. And that is why we are looking for more and more relation to art to better specify differences between, I would say, leaves, uh, the, the more yes. specific uh, uh, words. Thank you. Um, my question is very short. You have remarked that many projects start with Princeton Word and then translate it into other languages. Are you aware of any project starting with Polish Word as a source? <laughs> Not yet, but uh, I, I thought. But we, we are talking with our Czech colleagues that uh, that maybe in the, uh, would be good. To, what we need is just to have a dictionary and uh, bilingual dictionary and uh, bilingual corpus. It doesn't, oh, some, some comparable corpus. It could, could, for Slavic languages, it should work. Alexander? Oh, you have yes. um, My short question is about the fine-grainedness or the coarse-grainedness of, of your Synsets, yeah, and um, especially with um, having in mind the relatedness to a traditional dictionary. When you think of the normal sense um, splitting or lumping, there are these eternal debates between lexicographers um, who are individually one is a lumper, the other yeah. is a splitter. <laughs> and was wondering in your procedure um, how you take into account these personal differences. Yeah. First question, and the other one, um, how this relates to a traditional dictionary. 
Concerning pers personalities of linguists, we have uh, two layered structure. First of all, uh, we start with, uh, the, with writing uh, quite, I think, quite uh, detailed guidelines, and uh, we tried to develop quite um, uh, detailed procedure. Uh, but obviously there are some uh, uh, different personalities and there are so uh, uh, li work done by our, I would say, first-line linguists is then uh, verified, coordinated by um, uh, coordinator or coordinators. If we have larger team at that moment, we, have, we can have a couple of persons working as, as coordinators. Obviously, it's not ideal, but uh, we, uh, during uh, uh, the, the years, we uh, undergo uh, several phases of uh, verification because, for example, first we build Polish uh, version part and then we started mapping and uh, bilingual linguists working on mapping were reporting about some, some potential problems because they had to understand the structure first on the Polish side. And the next, when we're working with emotive annotation, it was yet another, uh, and sometimes uh, like just during last year, we completed a, a big effort of going across all the verbs and uh, modifying a little bit structure. So, and I would say that our general policy is to go um, uh, to uh, more general coast grain to lumping via splitting. I mean that first we define very the fine grained senses, but we also are working on, on, semi, on automatic, semi automatic means of, uh, of uh, clustering senses on basis of structure. Hi, thank you for your talk. It's thank really, you. really interesting. Um, my question is about the substitution tests. And uh, I'm wondering, do you reuse these uh, to run automatically as sort of regression tests on the data? Um, it would be difficult because uh, using them automatically because the decision must be made by a human, the, whether the given sentence is acceptable or not, depending on type of test, whether it sounds uh, correct or natural or not. Um, we try to use them systematically, but they are, they are in... Uh, the tests are designed for, lexico for linguists, lexicographers working on uh, finding, uh, uh, on deciding about relations. Uh, the problem is that uh, after the whole day of, of seeing the same test on the screen, you are, you are getting a little bit bored. So I suspect that sometimes they skip watching. <laughs> but uh, but I, I, I hope that in the most more tricky cases, they, they stop for a moment just to see whether the test works or not. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your very impressive talk. I know your work, and when I hear it again, I'm thinking, oh, wow, uh, we should have something like that for Dutch. But just if I would uh, ask you um, to do such an undertaking for another language and to make it successful, uh, could you sum up a list of uh, what would you recommend as necessary staff and time to realize that? And have you an extraction of the specific do's and to leave out the don'ts so that uh, we uh, benefit from lessons learned? Um, if we would try to do this, is this possible? I asked, I asked this because I uh, talked to Christian McKay who did the Thesaurus of English and she presented her work and she said to me, never ever do that again because that was... Uh, I loved my job, I loved the result, but never try this for Dutch. Would you say something similar like she did, or would you say, oh, this is doable, you just do this, that, and the other, and you go ahead with our tools, for example? So I'm yeah. curious. Thank you. Uh, I think that the most important words are patience and hope uh, at the beginning. <laughs> you, have to you have to believe that. <laughs> Uh, we couldn't imagine that we could go so far. So it's, uh, some some stage of the project we uh, we made such a uh, we said internally in our team that we are just uh, going to, towards the limits of our uh, lexical system. <laughs> in some, uh, I, my, my, uh, I think that yes, it is uh, very uh, worth uh, it's a very valuable experience exercise. Even if you uh, have a perspective on being uh, of building quite small resource, it is worth to do. 
it independently, not using any kind of, of translation. It's a very interesting exercise. And uh, well, uh, plenty of different practical uh, uh, advice that I could share with pleasure. Uh, so uh, this is a long, long term endeavor. And uh, even now, when we observe that world embeddings are quite good and uh, they d extract, but the most important observation from world embeddings, uh, we tested uh, different kinds of methods, and you will never find more than three up to four different meanings uh, represented in word embeddings. They generalize a lot. So still there's a place for dictionaries and for word nets in, in, the, in, the, in the contemporary world because we have description of very uh, infrequent, uh, very fine, uh, fine grained sometimes distinctions and this is, you cannot uh, obtain this with mat automatic methods. <laughs> okay, so with this Positive note, we have to stop because we are 10 minutes late and we continue just after the talk. So first let's thank our keynote speaker. Thank you.